Reputation Defender by Norton is one of the most trusted names in online reputation repair. We have over a decade of experience in fixing people's search results, and we can help you too. Using cutting-edge approaches, Reputation Defender pushes unflattering information down to lower pages of your search results, where few people ever look. We also promote the good stuff so that it rises to the top, letting you put your best foot forward. Your good name is too valuable to leave to the whims of a Google algorithm. You owe it to yourself to take control with Reputation Defender. Visit www.reputationdefender.com or call 800-401-6681 for free advice on your situation. 800-401-6681. 970 WDAY AM and 93.1 FM. Fargo-Moorhead. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. 104 right now, 69 degrees here in Fargo. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm here with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and the one and only amazing and wonderful Ag Director Bridget Riedel. Good afternoon, guys. How is your day going so far today? So far, so good. Woke up on the right side of the grass, so that's always a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you're using your neighbor's sod as a blanket. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be way more positive than that. It is. I am in western North Dakota today. I'm out in Dickinson. We have very little wind. It's nice and sunny, and it was a very nice overnight. Woke up this morning. It was actually a little bit humid out. Some moisture fell in a few places. So I'd say that things are looking pretty good. How's the rest of the week going to go, guys? Well... Not as good as the, <laughs> the ne next couple of days. Today and tomorrow look absolutely beautiful with temperatures well above where they should be. Normally, we should be in low to some spots, mid-60s uh, for this time of the year. But instead, we're going to be a good uh, 10 degrees above normal, uh, at least for today and tomorrow. And then uh, the bottom falls out. Areas that did not receive their first widespread freeze, uh, at least over most of the Dakotas into Minnesota and points southward, will see... Uh, looks like their first widespread frost and freeze. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good end of the growing season as uh, coldest air of the season hits, but uh, won't last long. We'll warm it up by the weekend. Yeah, it is shaping up. I think up we'll be okay a with that. Decent week. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's no snow in the forecast, so that's always a good thing. No snow yet. D true. <laughs> <laughs> no snow let's not yet. Be, let's not be a downer here. No, so not yet. <laughs> hey, some yeah. of us Could like the snow. Could you two be a little more? Could you two be a little more up tempo for a little while until we get to like November? Then you can do that. Oh, wow, I mean, now she's asking sugar for a beet lot. Harvest, That's. I yeah. am. I mean, sugar beet harvest is going well. It looks good. We are not pulling trucks through the field. People are happy with how things look right now. And I'm a people pleaser. Let's try to do that for a little longer. Couple weeks. Sure. Two, three weeks? Two weeks. And then can we introduce the snow into the forecast? By the end of the month? I'm getting antsy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I need a good uh. snow dumping. <laughs> Let's wait no. till the end of Since October. we missed out on all the storms and all the exciting weather, I just want something to come and, I don't know. Not yet. Something exciting. <laughs> let's not push it. Let's We're not... going to get hate mail, you guys. Storm, <laughs> let's not push uh, it. My, my, I'm watching my emails. It's going from 42, 43, 40. Yeah, that's a lot of hate mail coming in right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably Larry. Oh, well, well it, it, it might be Larry. Might Although I think Larry. he's a snow lover. I think he is likes he? the okay. snow. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure we're about to find out. Well, you know what this week is, right? It's, uh, I do, it's National 4-H Week, is it not? Yes, it is. And do you know what else it is? This is the start. It's Christmas. It is it's Christmas, Christmas for us. This is the start of the LRC, so it's this week where the North Pole goes into total darkness, and that's when the LRC cycle resets, and that will be resetting this week. So we'll be keeping a very close eye uh, on exactly how the the next two months kind of shake out because that will tell a big tale on uh, what the rest of the season will hold so i i i, I think the month of october is going to be very kind of roller coastery up and down up and down but uh, what happens after towards the end of the month uh we'll hit on that coming up here uh, after abc news stay with us don't go anywhere from abc news 
I'm Sherry Preston. Country music legend Loretta Lynn has died at the age of 90. ABC's Bill Deal has more on her life and career. Well, I was born to call daughter. Born in rural Kentucky, Loretta Lynn married at 13 and had four children by the time she turned 18. Her husband, Oliver Mooney Lynn, encouraged her to sing and they moved to Nashville. She became the first woman to win the Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year Award. Lynn was one of the few female country artists of that era to write her own material. Asked once about her songwriting secret. You need to write about true life. I think the Bible, love, and cheating will never go out of style. Bill Deal, ABC News. Lynn's family issued a statement this morning saying that Loretta Lynn passed away peacefully and her sleep at her home in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. President Biden and Vice President Harris will attend a meeting today in the White House Task Force on Reproductive Health. Since the Roe v. Wade decision was overturned by the Supreme Court, at least 15 states have since ceased or nearly ceased all abortion services. In southwest Florida, rescues continue nearly a week after Hurricane Ian came ashore, but there are fears some may still be trapped in flooded homes. I never imagined it would be this bad. Shelly McKinney just moved here with her husband two and a half weeks ago. Our car's gone. Our home is gone. Volunteers stepping in to help. Right now, Mercy Chefs is doing 6,000 meals a day. The widespread devastation stretching for miles and miles as search and rescue crews continue combing the coast. It's a race against the clock with concerns some may still be trapped by floodwaters. As ABC's Reno Roy in Fort Myers, the death toll from the hurricane nearly 100 in Florida. North Korea conducting its longest ever weapons test, a nuclear capable ballistic missile that flew over Japan. With it, it would be possible to reach the U.S. territory of Guam and beyond. Markets continuing the push from Monday. The Dow's up 743. You're listening to ABC News. Paid for by government.com. Have you heard? The United States Mint has issued the Morgan Silver Dollar for the first time in 100 years. Not only that, but they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 175,000 legal tender silver dollars were issued. These Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new, bright and shiny legal tender coins minted by the iconic Philadelphia Mint. Just call one 800 973 and you are guaranteed a new 99.9% .9 pure silver Morgan dollar. The first time in history this has happened. But with limited quantities, you must call now to order. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9714. If you order now, you will receive a free collector bonus, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9714 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9714. Find trustworthy car repair. Okay, here's what I found. Hi, I'm Matthew, owner of Fix It Forward Auto Care. We're confident that we can handle whatever your vehicle needs. From hybrid cars to full-size trucks, no job is too big or too small for our ASE certified technicians. We focus on quality, integrity, and giving back to the community at each of our three Fargo, Moorhead, and West Fargo locations. Fix It Forward Auto Care, the name you trust for car repair. Fix It Forward. Save now on premium mattresses, pillows, bases, and linens at Accord Comfort Sleep Systems directly across from Olive Garden. Find the best mattress design and construction with our exclusive technologies such as our Accord Comfort Reflex Layer, ensuring proper spinal alignment. Our Thermodyne Climate Control Fabric is perfect for the couple sleeping hot and cold. Buy today and take it home today or free delivery in the FM metro area. Accord Comfort Sleep Systems. You're going to love sleeping with us. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm here with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and Ag Director Bridget Riedel. And lots to come up on the show today. No guests today, so it's just the three of us. But we have more guests on throughout the coming week, and we'll tease on those coming up throughout the show. But Bridget, why don't we hit a few ag topics? We usually do weather quick, but I don't know. I don't want to do the weather right now. So maybe we can talk a little farm. <laughs> I love it when we talk farm, you guys. I'm all ready for it. Well, why don't we talk about this EPA announcement on glyphosate? Well, okay, glufosinate is the name, and I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just wanting to make sure that I share with you how we say it because we're going to talk about it a lot. Glu excuse me, glyphosate, glyphos, that's actually sold under the brand name of Roundup. That's the name that you're most familiar with. Well, 
here's the story in the background. EPA is required by courts, by the court system, every 15 years to go through what's called the FQPA, the Food Quality Protection Act, and they have to review each label and renew its registration. Glyphosate's registration renewal process had started. The deadline was to get it done by October 1st. That did not happen. So EPA issued a statement last, late last week, and they said, we're not going to get this done. That means that the current label that is in place will continue. It's 15 years old. They had, back in February of 2020, done a proposed interim registration due to the court ruling, but they're going to set that aside and go back to the registration that's 15 years old. What they will be doing going forward to complete this requirement of the 15-year review is revisit human risk assessments, ecological risk assessments, and their biggest focus is going to be on the Endangered Species Act and protecting endangered species. They will do that hand in hand with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Surface Service. Excuse me. Moving forward, if the EPA is not sat, excuse me, if the court is not satisfied with the EPA's answer. They're going to do what they wish, regardless of what the EPA proposes. So in the short run, things with the glyphosate label are going to stay status quo. They may change. We don't have an indication of exactly when, as all of this is being reviewed, et cetera, questions are being asked. It's like, you know, much like other products that have open comment periods, et cetera. So we're just going to see how that goes for the moment. But just know that in the 44-page document that was released last week to a farmer who's using glyphosate, that proposal, all that information is going to be status quo for right now. So that's what I wanted to make sure you knew. So what happens if this doesn't uh, go according to plan? What happens after that? We may wind up losing some of our uses of glyphosate that we currently have agriculturally. So we don't know what that might look like yet because the reason that this Food Quality Protection Act exists is I want you to picture a teacup. And the more uses that you have, that's another drop of tea in your teacup. And every time you add to it, it gets closer and closer to the upper limit. When you reach the upper limit, which is kind of where we're at with some of our herbicides, uses have to be taken out to reduce the amount that's in that teacup. That's kind of where we're at right now, assessing how full is the cup, anything that has to be taken out, what changes would have to be made to the label, etc. So we don't have a good answer what that'll look like yet, Today's answer is we're still just fine doing what we've been doing with glyphosate. Well, hopefully nothing changes right. a whole lot on that. Ideally. It would be great. That's one of it, it. And Dean's right. It's hopeful that nothing big changes because glyphosate is the number one used herbicide globally. There's a lot of applications that we, that we use it for. And it's a useful product. But like any other pesticide, it is a chemical. We have to use it according to label directions and respectfully. That's very important to everyone. So obviously the agriculture community is pretty familiar with what this is, but for Dean or I or anyone else just walking into the store, what kind of common in-store products contains this that they mm -hmm. may use at their house or their yard, their garden? So let's say you're walking through the home and garden section at one of the lawn and garden stores or a hardware store, and you see Roundup on the shelf. You can still buy that in a ready-to-use format called an RTU, and you can use that to spray dandelions on the cracks in your sidewalk. Or if you need to put up a deck and you want to kill the grass underneath, you can use that product to do it. Make sure you read and follow all label instructions. It's like when you bake a cake. You don't just go into it blindly and throw everything in the in the pan and hope it bakes out right. I've done nope, that. You follow the directions. Yep, and it turns Dean. out and it turns out horrible. <laughs> you know, Thank I was you. just going to say I, I think I've tried that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when we follow the directions, we can still continue to use it. And for home and garden use, those label restrictions have not changed. Everything is still the same as it was even before last week's announcement. Hmm. 
All right. Well, if you'd like to join in on our conversation, drop any comments on any of the topics that we cover throughout the show or ask any questions, again, feel free to reach us by calling into our studio lines live 701-293-9000, 701-293-9000, or you can always send those weather or ag-related topics or questions during or after the show to our email at weather or ag at flagfamily.com. Also, remember that you can find us on Facebook Book, weather and egg in focus or at wag in focus and you can also perhaps have a chance of winning a nice little rain gauge no active contest right now we just ended the month of september and we gave two of those away but i'm sure we'll be giving some more rain gauges away on social media as well as here on the show not sure about today maybe maybe not you'll have to stay tuned so stay <laughs> right here weather and egg in focus we'll be right back are you utilizing your storage space as efficiently as possible? If you have 8-foot shelving under 16-foot ceilings, you're only using half the space you're paying for. But to use that space the right way requires the right equipment, and you need someone knowledgeable you can trust. Here's Kari Score, whose dad Nels started Dakota Storage Products in West Fargo over a quarter of a century ago. My dad always said, if you're paying for the space, you might as well use it. It's a simple idea, but it isn't always that easy. That's why we have been here for more than 25 years, helping businesses, farmers, and everyone in our region make their storage space smart, safe, and efficient. For the largest inventory of pallet racks on the northern prairie, along with shelving, loading dock equipment, cabinets, bins, warehouse ladders, and thousands of other storage solutions available, come see the experts at Dakota Storage Products in West Fargo. They'll help you make your storage space fit your needs. Call 701-281-1209 or visit dakotastorageproducts.com on the web. Their warehouses are West Fargo. Dakota Storage Products, they'll help you store stuff smart. Been looking for a golf cart for the lake, cabin, or the course? Largest selection of club car onward golf carts within 150 miles is available at All Season Motorsports. 0% financing. That's 0% financing for up to 36 months on 2022 and 23 club car golf carts. All inventory must go. Largest selection of club cars at 0% financing. All Season Motorsports off I-94 and Cheyenne Street, West Fargo. Hurry before they're gone. This view was worth a hike. Right? And it's a good way to stay on top of my health. Yes, I'm Cologuard, a prescription colon cancer screening option for people 45 plus at average risk. Have you screened for colon cancer? Not yet. Don't wait. It's more treatable when caught in early stages. Tell me more. Cologuard is non-invasive and it's used at home. It detects altered DNA in your stool to find 92% of colon cancers. 92%? Yep, even those in early stages. This was seen in a clinical study with patients 50 and older. Any positive results should be followed by a diagnostic colonoscopy. False positive and negative results may occur. Cologuard is not a replacement for colonoscopy in high-risk patients. Do not use if you have had adenomas, have inflammatory bowel disease and certain hereditary syndromes, or a personal or family history of colon cancer. Most insured patients pay $0. Ask your provider or an online prescriber if Cologuard is right for you. Or visit Cologuard.com. I'm in. She posted about us? Just now? Celebrities can't get enough of Bianca's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. And welcome back to WDAY Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm Bridget Riedel, Ag Director, along with Chief Meteorologist Dean Waisaki and our meteorologist extraordinaire, Justin Storm. Gentlemen, just curious here how things might be going with the weather forecast. We've touched on it just a little bit. What's our long term going to look like? And by the way, you said it's Christmas for meteorologists. What's going on with the LRC? Well, Bridget, that's a good question. So anybody not familiar with the LRC, we talk about that quite often. And uh, it stands for Lezak Recurring Cycle. And it's a, it's a newer way. It's been around for a while, but it's being perfected uh, each year. Um, it, it, it gets more accurate and more accurate. And it's, it's a, a cycling method. And it's used to forecast long term. So every year, about October 6th, 
Uh, so with that's coming up here in a few days. Uh, we have the sun that, that the North Pole goes into total darkness. As that occurs, that's when the new LRC cycle resets. So this week it resets. So we'll watch for what the pattern is later this week, and it does turn cold. Uh, is that a sign of things to come for the rest of the winter? Well, we have to wait and see what the rest of this month in November unfolds. Um, so we'll be watching the weather patterns, and the weather pattern that sets up later this week. We will watch the upper-level weather charts and watch for that same pattern to come back around, whether that's in 30 days, 35, 45, 50. We don't know yet until that same pattern comes back around. Um, so once that establishes itself, then we know the approximate um, cycle length. So let's say it's 45 days. Then the same weather will repeat itself, not always in the exact same fashion, but something very similar every 45 days throughout the fall winter, spring, and into the summer. So if we have a very dry uh, October and November and into December, that's not good news. That usually means that we will have uh, a dry spring and, and, and into summer as well. Now, that's just the centerpiece of the long-term forecasting. We've got uh, La Nina, which is going on this winter, although that's supposed to subside uh, starting early next year. So that's good news. Um, so we'll wait and see how that unfolds. But this is the first week of the, of the reset cycle of the LRC. So we, we look forward to this time of the year and, and, and what happens over the next few weeks. But one thing we're noticing, at least uh, Justin and I am on some of the long-term models, uh, is that Western Ridge U.S. trough. If, if that holds through, um, cold for sure, but usually those don't turn up too many big storms for us. Uh, so we'll we'll see if that western ridge retrogrades, which I was taking a look at some longer term models from this morning, and they're trying to retrograde or back up that ridge out uh, into the Pacific and uh, kind of nudge that up into the uh, Northwest Territories. That would not spell good news for us. That would be an extremely cold winter. So we'll wait and see. Again, the LRC is the main piece of the puzzle that we use for, for long term forecasting and uh it's it the, the month of October is looking pretty dry, at least the first half of it right now. We'll we'll wait and see what the second half holds. Yeah, definitely. And as for the um, <clears throat> for the shorter term forecast across the area, as we were talking about at the beginning of the show, we are expecting uh, some of the coldest air of the season so far to be flooding down out of Canada, and that's going to be happening Wednesday night and Thursday night. And it's not until Thursday night, Friday morning that we're expecting that wider spread hard freeze area uh, across North Dakota extending into northwestern Minnesota but for today not too bad out there mostly cloudy to partly sunny across the area we we're looking at high temperatures today reaching into the lower 70s you get enough sunshine you might even poke into the mid 70s with light wind out of the south southwest around 5 to 15 so hey not too bad it's a Pretty nice afternoon out there, even if there is uh, plenty of cloud cover. If we're 10 degrees above average from where we should be this time of year, I'll take that any day of the week. Tonight, those winds will switch out of the north, still remaining around 5 to 15. Temperatures stay rather mild, only dropping down to a low around 50 degrees. And as we head into Wednesday, that's another nice day. At least two-thirds of the day is going to be really nice. I'll explain on that here in just a moment. Throughout the day, I'm expecting partly cloudy conditions, lower and mid-70s again with a west-northwest wind around 10 to 20. But... A pretty aggressive cold front will be coming through as we head through Wednesday evening into Wednesday night. That's really just going to knock our wind out of the north around 15 to 30 miles an hour and gusting up to about 40 miles an hour overnight Wednesday into Thursday. And with that north strong wind, we're going to drag down some cold Canadian air mass uh, down into North Dakota and Minnesota. That's going to keep our temperatures stuck in the mid and upper 40s on Thursday with an overnight low in the 20s. So hard freeze Thursday night and Friday morning. If you got sensitive plants, bring them indoors. If you're not ready for that garden to die like me, put an ice house over it and a little furnace to keep them nice and toasty, and hopefully you don't have to worry about your plants dying off. And we'll see one more chance for a little patchy frost probably Friday night, the afternoon of Friday. Temperatures stuck in the mid-upper 40s again, but by the weekend, not too bad. All that wind lightens up. We'll have temperatures close to 60 degrees, a lot of sunshine, and... We'll even start to warm things up even a little more as we head into the beginning of next week. So a couple days of cold weather, but overall the forecast is looking rather nice. Speaking of forecasts and so forth, guys, I have a question for you. Uh, the last couple days we've had a story talking about OSHA, which is Occupational Safety and Health 
administration is proposing a new rule where it would have to do with the heat index. And what they're saying is that once the heat index exceeded 80 degrees, there would have to be special consideration for folks who are working in grain handling facilities, et cetera, because you have the possibility of heat-induced injury. Can you remind us again, heat index, I know we're getting ready to go towards winter, but what's the heat index? How is that determined? Because I'd like to know to go along with this story if we could. Justin, Justin you want to take that or you want me to take that? <laughs> well, I want to, they don't want a heat index over 80 because of right. heat concerns. That doesn't yes. seem very high. I would agree. So is this a combination of heat and humidity? In, in potentially in that case, that might be my question, but that's what they're looking at is potentially in, an enforcement on these heat priority days. And again, that would be a heat index over 80 degrees. This is during the summer? Yes. Well, it would be the... F when it always happens. Well, air temperature fall is usually over 80. I could see fall, but summer, I mean, air temperature is usually above 80. And uh, like you were saying, Bridget, yes, the, the heat index is your heat and your humidity. Think of it the exact opposite of wind chill, but the same process. So in the winter, when it's cold, it's really dry. You get that air that rips over your skin and it evaporates the moisture off of your skin. And that, call, that causes the cooling or the frost or uh, the wind chill. Uh, in the summer, it's the exact opposite. You have so much humidity in the air that you can't evaporate that moisture off your skin or the sweat. And we all know that sweating is how you cool down. You evaporate it off, it cools you down. But when it's too humid, you can't evaporate that sweat fast enough. So it feels like it's hotter than it really is just because your body isn't able to cool down with a breeze. I kind sense, of wondered right? how that might go yep. because, it, yeah, it just <laughs> mm -hmm. it seemed like that was a really low number for OSHA to be throwing out. But, again, it's a proposed rule. It hasn't happened yet, Man. but that would be something that they are looking to take into consideration and have it as, as an enforceable rule depending on what that worker project might be in that type of weather. So something to so keep an are eye they, on. Are they, are they worried about heat? Is OSHA worried about heat exhaustion? Is, is, that, is that their Yeah, heat exhaustion – and because they and other heat related injuries, uh, oh. it sounds to me like they are concerned about the number of days people lose to work because of overheating. That's but a, 80 is the low that's number. That's an insane number. That's that's nuts. That's very, very yeah. low. You see, I maybe I understand where they're trying to take this number from because I worked in a kitchen and, and our AC uh, unit had broke and we were very, very upset about it. So we were looking up all the rules about what an interior temperature is legally supposed to be for for an establishment, and they don't want the temperature over 74 degrees. So I could kind of understand that aspect, but you need to remember that this is outside, and most of the time yes. through the summer, early fall, y your heat index is usually probably over 80 degrees just because of air temperature alone. I would agree with that. So this is why I wanted to ask you guys what are we doing when it comes to heat index? Because as we watch these types of rules and things change, it's good to know what the background might be. Or, as we mentioned yesterday on air, contact your Congress people and have that discussion with them about what's reality and what's not. Yeah, that's 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 that that's, way out of reality. That's just wow. Oof. Yeah, it is. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Well, if you want to join our conversation and voice your opinions or your thoughts on that topic or anything else that we talk about throughout the show, you want to ask us a question, give us a call, 701-293-9000. Again, that phone number for our studio lines is 701-293-9000, or you can always reach us via email during or after the show at weather or egg at flagfamily.com. Also find us on Facebook, Weather and Egg in focus stay tuned we'll be right back and we're going to touch on a few more ag headlines as well as some friendly reminders and tips around the fall preparing for the upcoming winter save now on premium mattresses pillows bases and linens at accord comfort sleep systems directly across from olive garden find the best mattress design and construction with our exclusive technologies such as our accord comfort reflex layer ensuring proper spinal alignment our thermodyne climate control fabric is perfect for the couple sleeping hot and cold buy today and take it home today or free delivery in the fm metro area accord comfort sleep systems you're gonna love sleeping with us 
What's wrong, hon? Uh, I've got two major projects to complete and not enough help to finish either one. i got to find help with demo, concrete, framing, insulation, and cleanup. Honey, you need to call Labor Masters. Hi, Nancy Kelly here from Labor Masters. If you're looking for hardworking, quality individuals to help you complete the projects and meet all your deadlines, give us a call. Labor Masters is the only call you have to make when your company needs last-minute help. We guarantee our work and handle all the details. Call us at 701-566-8755 or online at labormasters.net. It's a busy time of the year with harvesting going on in the Red River Valley. Feedvig Oil and Propane reminds you to use extra precaution as you move about so everyone has a safe and bountiful harvest season. Contact Feedvig Oil and Propane for your propane, farming fuel, and lubricant requirements. Proudly serving the area for over 60 years are your friends at Feedvig Oil and Propane online at feedvigoil.com. I'm David Chapman. I'm a candidate for judge. For 25 years, I've enjoyed tremendous success in our community, but it is time to give back. I love freedom, our country, and our constitution. If elected, I will enforce the law as it is written, not as I wish it were written. I invite you to visit Chapman for Judge on Facebook, and I would be honored to serve. Paid for by David Chapman. Brian Feuder with the NDSCS Apprenticeship Program. NDSCS's apprenticeship program is really based on the typical apprenticeship models that have been in, in, in existence for many years. But currently there are over a thousand apprenticeable occupations that are recognized by the United States Department of Labor. Hi, I'm Dixie Bope. I'm the Director of Nursing at Four Seasons Healthcare Center. I encourage other companies to use the NDSCS apprenticeship program. They have a personal relationship with you. They help you out with advertising. They help bring in new candidates, interviews, um, get the word out. Hi, my name is Pamela Morrow, Project Specialist for NDSCS Apprenticeship. If you're interested in a program, please reach out today by calling 701-231-6927 or go online to ndscs.edu backslash workforce hyphen affairs and click on the Apprenticeship North Dakota tab. See if the NDSCS Apprenticeship Program is for you. Hey, welcome to Weather and Again Focus. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki along with uh, meteorologist superstar Justin Storm and superstar it's Ag Director. Extraordinaire, Dean. Uh, you, you know, we're going to change this up a little bit. <laughs> How about extraordinaire <laughs> Ag Director Bridget Riedel? So, um, superstar Justin Storm. There we go. So let's, nice. t- let's talk a little bit about long-term, uh, long-term forecasting. Okay, so earlier we were talking about the LRC and how that's the main piece to the puzzle of our long-term forecasting. There's many different pieces. We've got La Nina. We've got uh, what we call the PNA. That and So many different pieces to the puzzle that we use to forecast long-term. Uh, and Justin, I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at the uh, Climate Prediction Center. Uh, we all know how accurate or inaccurate sometimes that can be, but they just put out their uh, long-range outlook for the rest of the winter uh, just about a few weeks ago. And can I can I guess? <laughs> you go for it. Let, let's so go. You, have, you haven't seen it. Okay. okay. I have not seen it, okay. but I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm just gonna say cold with periods of snow. <laughs> it's pretty close. Yeah, uh, a colder than normal winter uh, for the northern plains into the Great Lakes, and uh, equal. Ch- I love the equal chances of precip. So it could yeah. go basically. Well, it could be more. It could it's be a coin. Less. It's a coin toss. It could go either way, and and that's where the LRC really comes into play is uh, really for, for these larger scale storms and for uh, the outlook for snow or rain or whatever it is for over the winter. And um, I mean, I got to be honest with you, I'm not liking the pattern that's, that, that, that's trying to set up for October. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but the pattern that's setting up looks like a very dry pattern, at least to start off the month. Now that could totally flip around for November and December, and then there we have it. But um, I'm not liking the dryness look. I remember last October, we, that's when we started to get these parade of storms coming off the Pacific. Uh, and if you remember, we had that, uh, in fact, I was just looking this up earlier. When was that tornado outbreak? Was that in December of last year? 
if I'm not mistaken. December 15th. Yeah, uh, 13th or 15th in southern Minnesota. Yeah, the 15th of December. Yeah, so we could start out, but I believe that first part of that storm came. Didn't we have something similar to that in October? I believe we hit. I'm pretty sure we did. It was right around mid-October, and then that recycled back in December. So that's kind of what I'm worried about um, in terms of a, a, of a dry uh, start to the month of October. Uh, and just let's hope we can change that towards the end of the month. We don't want a dry month. September was dry enough, um, and we don't want that bleeding over into October now, um, seeing that that's the first part of the LRC cycle. The other thing that I was a little nervous about with the pattern that's like you said, trying to set up right now, is that westerly ridge. Basically, when the jet stream bulges way up to the north over the west coast, over the Pacific Ocean, it reaches high enough into Canada up towards Alaska. If if that comes back around in our cycle a second or third time, that usually uh, entitles a pretty good dump of cold air. You know, you have the jet stream reaching up into Canada, slamming down through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, all that cold air would come back around in the upcoming winter, and usually we would refer to that sometimes as the polar vortex, which was a semi-permanent low up in the Greenland, North Pole. It's usually when it loses its strength, it wobbles around, it ends up falling over the United States or over on the other side, over in Russia, and it brings down just extremely cold air. So the signs are pointing towards a possibility of a couple of good cold snaps coming this winter obviously we don't quite know what's going to happen the lrc is just starting to reset at the end of this week so we'll see how it evolves over the next few weeks and the next month or so yeah and and typically with with la nina and and the ridge out to our west a lot of times we get what's called an anchor trough into the great lakes and that usually side swipes us in terms of not giving us a whole lot of precip and focusing the main uh, precip into areas of the Great Lakes. We'll see if that involves. Again, uh, it, it's the LRC cycle, like you said, is just resetting itself this week, and uh, we'll be keeping a close eye. But, and you can keep a close eye along with us. I mean, you know, if, if again, if we have a pretty dry October, then, well, that's a dry start to each LRC cycle. So, Again, we'll see what we'll see what unfolds. There's still there's still plenty of time. Where the the usually when you go into the fall, that jet stream starts to sink a little further south, and it starts to strengthen as well. And it's usually that change in seasons. Right when we start to change seasons, our computer models are all over the place, and they flip flop from uh, from one extreme to the other. I don't know if you caught. Uh, I'll give you a good example. Our wonderful American model. Uh, which sometimes we use and many times we don't, uh, was predicting snow in our area by the middle of the month. And I don't know if you caught that on the overnight runs, uh, Justin, but then they, they, they totally removed it for, for uh, this morning's run. So that's what I mean. When you get into these change in seasons, our, our computer models, are, especially our long-range models, are not often that accurate. So we just have to be patient and wait and see what kind of pattern, not that the models are forecasting, but what pattern actually unfolds to be able to predict the rest of the winter, if that makes sense. So if we, I hope I didn't confuse it you. does. And if we <laughs> no, but if we do that, okay. So, what makes them so unpredictable and unstable at this point? Why why don't we have that little bit more accuracy if we've been using these weather models for so long? Justin, why don't why don't you explain Ooh. like you explained to me about the new American? Why has our American model been so off? And I mean, and it, it's it, it's not just this time oh, of the year, Bridget, my, my, my. but it was so far it's off always. over the this last summer and even last spring it was way way out of tune with the other forecast models and justin did a little digging and found out why yeah so i actually know somebody who knows one of the lead people who is in charge of these computer models and the development and updates on a lot of these computer models and what's going on with our american model is it recently had been upgraded and switched to a new style of processing to make it more efficient and better but what ended up happening is and they're aware of it and they're planning on fixing this middle of next year is when they're planning on rolling out the update to hopefully correct it something in the math the computer software the programming is wrong so the computer model over time 
is drying out the soil based on what it expects, you know, would be removed just like it happens. You know, it rains, the soil draws, dries out. That's what the computer model is doing, but it's doing it so bad and it completely dries it out. And when you end up doing that, you get such an inaccurate value of what is actually there that it ends up causing the boundary layer, which is a layer of the atmosphere, which separates the surface from the free flowing air aloft to warm up it causes the ground to heat up and you get this really mixed layer in the atmosphere meaning that the wind or the air is moving up and down through it and it causes just extreme heat and cold and that's what's been happening with our american model is that everything is too hot everything is too cold you can't even get close to what the actual temperature is going to be outside of three or four days on that model so you look at it and it's like uh, you know, we've cracked jokes. All the American model wants to bring in 115 degree heat over the upcoming weekend, and in reality, it's like 85 or maybe 90. That's what's actually going on with that model is it's just so many errors that are being built into it. And to go back to your question, Bridget, on why do our computer models have such inconsistencies and differentiating numbers or whatever it is that you want to call it the different errors is that meteorology is an approximation there is an exact science to it but we don't know everything about it and our computer models and the resources that are needed to obtain those actual values is unobtainable we just can't do it so we make approximations and when your computer model starts running all this information for today tomorrow and then when it wants to do that third day it takes all the approximated values for that day two to calculate day three then it takes that to calculate day four so you can see if you know if you're trying to add two plus two you get four but if you're approximating that and you're using like 1.9 plus 1.9 sure you can round up it's close enough to two but if you go seven ten fourteen days out that number is going to be way off compared to what actually happens so think of that with all the different little parameters that go into forecasting using these computer models it's just a buildup of rounding up or rounding down or approximation and it just very rarely ends up playing out like that right and jacob i believe we have a call okay we have a call a caller on the line it's uh wade you got a comment about an episode from a while ago when uh, you guys were when we were talking about cow manure. <laughs> Go ahead, Wade. Yeah, I was watching the episode of uh, Rick Bees, and they were over in Turkey, and uh, they were talking about they need four cows to produce cow manure for their uh, winter fuel, and um, they produce enough fuel to heat their homes for an entire winter and you were talking like one cow produces like seven or eight tons of manure in a year's time <laughs> y'all have a nice mm -hmm. day now <laughs> thank you <laughs> bridget i think i so think we, we might be on to uh, a new home heating process right and so they are doing this so overseas we might huh? be I think, well, let's go back in time. If, if, for those of you who have read anything about homesteading in North Dakota, in years where they had trouble receiving coal, they would use dried out buffalo chips or dried out cow chips for burning in their coal stoves. So it is a heat it's source. my favorite kind and of And like chip. Wade said, <laughs> <laughs> as Wade said, there are other countries that might be using that. And I believe what it equated to in our story when we were talking about uh, beef animals and essentially I think that was coming from the Minnesota State Fair and how much manure is produced during that run of the fair. And it's about four times the animal's body weight on an annual basis is what they produce for manure. So Wade, if you're getting a couple of cows in the backyard and switching over your home heating, <laughs> let us know how it turns out for you. But yes, that is actually something that has been done through the generations and may still happen in certain countries. So Wade, we really appreciate your call and bringing that up. Thank you for wanting to talk about it today. That's awesome. And you know, with a cold winter and uh, the price of uh, heating oil, I'm sure is gonna, going to uh, soar up this winter, uh, that might be a nice alternative. Well, Dean, it's Dean a good are you thing back you to shopping for a out. cow? <laughs> I'm back to shopping for a cow. We'll see. No, he still has the cow. We got it out of the ro or off the his second level. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah now we were able to two. get it down. Now he needs two cows. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Go. Keep them company, twice the fuel. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, yes, Wade, we really appreciate the phone call. And if you'd like to reach out and give us a phone call, join our conversation, bring up a topic or a question, feel free to do so anytime during our show by calling 701-293-9000. Again, that phone number to call into our studio lines is 701-293-9000, or you can always reach us at weather or ag at flagfamily.com, which is our email address. And I just got to email Dean. I don't know if you were able to see I that. I saw one. it. Just came through uh it's, well, that must be what the climate change cronies are using is that american model is when we were talking about why is it so inconsistent and why do these models accumulate so many errors the further out you look yeah and and, that's and that goes on to a or can, go ahead go ahead dean no go ahead okay i was gonna say that's what really gets me is on facebook and you find these pages of people who don't know what they're talking about taking pictures 14 days out on the American GFS, catastrophic blizzard going to hit the northern Great Plains, 48 to 50 inches of snow, and then you get uh, like three days from the event and you get like three inches of snow 60 miles north. That's the one problem with social media is people can pick and choose what information they want to post on there. And it, it does. It, it kind of puts a negativity into the meteorological community for the people that actually are forecasting correctly and not just pulling the doomsday scenario off of one particular model. It's a puzzle. I tell people forecasting is uh, we have a bunch of pieces of the puzzle and we try and fit all together. You can't just take that one piece and forecast yeah, that. It, it's you can't. definitely a skill and an art yes. combination of the two to be a good forecaster. Uh, and Bridget, this was a, a follow-up question from a conversation we were having a while back about the heat index of 80 degrees. Uh, that they don't want you to be working in these grain bins if the heat index is over 80. Um, do they do anything for cold, for wind chill? Is there something in there where they regulate that as well? I'm not sure if well, that's we something think so. you would know Jake, off the top of your hand. Well, not exactly off the top of my head, and we think so because Jacob, our stellar producer, was able to find some guidelines for cold weather extremes. Now, again, I think what we were looking for had a lot to do with the heat that happens during harvest, which again, I think 80 is a lower number, but we'll have to see what happens as the winter goes on. Maybe we can find some information about cold weather extremes for OSHA and what their, um, what their guidelines might be for employees that are working outside as well. So we can do that hmm. as time rolls on, but uh, for the moment, we're gonna catch up with the market report and see what's going on in today's markets. And we'll do that, come back and finish talking about the weather and other ag headlines that are out there. So folks, hang on, we'll be right around. The Jay Thomas Show. One of the deals was, was at the Blind Center, we get a weekly trip to Target, and my friend Bob says, hey, you want to go out and enjoy the uh, fresh air outside? Standing out there with Deacon and my white cane and trying to drink my coffee, and the next day I took a drink of my coffee, there's dollar bills and change in my coffee cup. No! They thought I was a panhandler. <laughs> oh, no! Really? <laughs> yeah, I to ruin my coffee, but at least I made enough I could go in and get a fresh cup. The Jay Thomas Show on WDAY. Hey, Chris Berg here. Radio personalities like myself, we spend a ton of time and energy during the day, obviously, in front of the computer. We're looking for news stories for you, talking to callers. So when the day is finally over, I get to go home and crawl into my Comfort King excited because I know I'm going to get a great night's sleep. At Comfort King Mattress Factory, they build a mattress just for you. That's what they do. Comfort King has the only lifetime comfort guarantee. So buy local and shop Comfort King Mattress Factory. Hi, this is Stacy from Midtown Tavern, featuring Dwayne's House of Pizza. Who else in town has a Glycol Polar Plate system? What? It's a secondary system for chilling tap beer. Put that in one of our frosted mugs and it's the coldest beer in town. Everyone wants the coldest beer. Midtown Tavern has it. Combine that with a Dwayne's Pizza, as well as our vast menu with many handmade menu items, specials every day of the week, and a multi-purpose room up to 50 people. Stop in to visit us. The Midtown Tavern, 2223 Highway 10 East in Moorhead. 
Looking to dress up your garage or patio? The concrete experts at Prairie Supply can help with any size concrete project. From design to delivery, we have built a great reputation renting equipment for your project needs. They have a large inventory of rental tools and equipment for decorative concrete, including stamps, polishing equipment, and a variety of tools designed to make your dream a reality. Prairie Supply, the contractor's headquarters. For more info, go to prairiesupply.com. A mostly risk-on day across commodities on Tuesday. This is the American Ag Network of Jesse Allen with this closing market update. A quarter bean prices were firm on the day, riding the good feelings among money managers while fundamentally pointing to declining condition scores in the United States. Forecast for more drought in South America. As uh, we saw, money flow was fairly positive, especially in quarter beans on the day as the tech sector led Wall Street higher and many traders are thinking we may have reached peak monetary tightening for many of the world's central banks. That remains to be seen, but the overall sentiment in the market was to trade risk on on the day as the dollar broke lower. And we saw wheat markets uh, start higher but fall notably lower and trade relatively mixed at the close with Chicago wheat on the short end of spreads as drought continues to plague the start of the 2023 growing season for the winter wheat crop. Livestock started higher and fell lower on the session as well and did not take advantage of the positive money flow on Tuesday. Tuesday's final numbers, December quarter up two and a quarter, 683. March quarter up two and a half, 690. November beans up nine and a half, 1383 and a half. January up nine and a half, 1393 and a half. Bead meal October down 260 a ton, 403. Bead oil October up 175.6863. Chicago wheat December 9 lower, 903. March Chicago wheat down 9.5, 9.15 and a half. KC wheat December unchanged, 988 and three quarters. December spring wheat down four and three quarters, 975 and a quarter. March spring wheat down four and a half, 981 and a quarter. Live cattle October down 12, 144.20. December lives down 52, 147.50. Feeder cattle October down 87, 174.65. November down 85, 175.20. Lean hogs October down 177 to 87 even. December hogs 330 lower, 74.42. That's a look at the closing market numbers for Tuesday. You're listening to the American Ag Network. I'm Jesse Allen reporting. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for joining us. 154 right now in the afternoon. We got temperatures close to 70 degrees outside. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm here with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and Ag Director Bridget Riedel. We still got a few things that we need to get to, including a few tips for around the farm and friendly reminders. But Dina, why don't we take a quick look at national weather, what's going on around the uh, the region? Yeah, quick look around the nation. Uh, regionally, we're seeing a little uh, upper level system pulling in out of South Dakota. Uh, that's giving us a cloud cover right now to the valley and into lakes country. And a little light rain is expected to develop as we head into the afternoon, favoring areas of Minnesota. Uh, but that, again, I can't rule out an isolated shower or two here. Uh, with um, the rest of the nation pretty quiet, the uh, remnants of Ian still impacting areas of the Mid-Atlantic uh, with uh, quite a bit of rain there. Other than that, high pressure controls areas from uh, the uh, Great Lakes down into the southeast, and much of the west has been, has, has been the case here over the last few months, just abnormally dry with the exception of the monsoonal moisture. We're starting to see some snow in the higher elevations of Colorado, uh, that's a sign of uh, of things to come, but uh, no big storms uh, throughout the lower 48. That's good news, um, and and unfortunately, I don't see a uh, a a stormy look to uh, the lower 48. Although we do see a, a lot of, uh, we're starting to see signs of these clipper systems that will be dragging down the cold air. Uh, could have two of them over the next two weeks that are going to be one later this week and one later next week that drag down a couple of healthy chunks of some uh, pretty cold air uh, centering themselves into the Great Lakes where they could have uh, first snow of the season in the UP of Michigan and maybe as close by as the Arrowhead of Minnesota. But it looks like uh, definitely at least a few f the, the first flakes of the season are, are going to come in with this cold air over the next week to 10 days in areas of the northern Great Lakes. Other than that, though, much of the nation looking, uh, looking okay. Pretty quiet. Hey, there we go. And, Bridget, we still got to get to these uh, little... Friendly reminders and tips, uh, cleaning out your nozzles well, and such. You want to go on that a little bit? Well, let's be honest. As the Dean talks about what the weather chilling off and getting colder, we know that there is going to be less 
uh, sprayer applications that are going to be going on. We're going to do some fall fertilizer work with uh, dry material, but as far as what we're going to be doing with liquids, it's getting closer to the time to winterize those sprayers because we've done our post harvest applications and we're going to put them away for the winter months. And when you're doing that, one of the things that can be easily overlooked is cleaning out the nozzles. Now, those little nozzle bodies on a sprayer, boom, all have little screens in them, and residues can catch in those. So it's just a reminder to folks to take those out, put them in some soapy water. Dawn dish soap actually works really well for cleaning out a lot of them. Wear your Ag Chem gloves, wear those plastic gloves, take an old toothbrush, not one that you're going to reuse in the house and just do a little bit of cleaning to take care of that. And I often show a filter that I carry around with me because I had some farmers that thought they did a really great job of winterizing their sprayer, but they forgot to pull that filter out and rinse that. And it literally looked like somebody packed wet sea salt in it and then let it dry. It was this hard chunk. Let's not let that happen inside of the equipment. Most everyone is really good at cleaning it out but we get busy, especially with harvest going on. We've got a lot of corn and soybeans being taken off. Just make sure you clean out your sprayers before you park them for the winter months. They're an expensive machine. We don't want anything bad to happen to them. No, definitely not. And any other little uh, small things, well, tips, reminders for people that maybe someone forgot about or they were just, I got this, this, and this done, but oh, I forgot this little thing that might be important. More importantly, I want to do a shout out that it is National 4-H Week. We often talk about FFA here, and that's mainly because, well, I kind of know a lot about FFA. <laughs> but 4-H has a tremendous following. Uh, they are clubs that are most generally led and worked with, they work with the Extension Service. They're led by volunteers. That's probably the cleanest way for me to say it. And so the Extension Service helps promote this with youth. There are Clover Buds. Those are smaller kids, probably in the age group of about six and up. And then kids can work their way through all of their high school years, participating in contests that could be livestock focused, archery. They also learn how to do canning and some home skills, and they're very big on service to their community. And so happy 4-H week to all of you out there who are current and former 4-H members. We are happy for all the things that you do and the skills that you learned while you were part of that program. I think that's a great big thing to remember. And for those of you who will be listening tomorrow, which I hope is everybody, Dan Moser from Laramore, North Dakota. He is a crop consultant. He's going to talk to us about mint production because we do raise as one of our specialty crops in North Dakota a bunch of mint. Where does it go? How do we raise it? How do we harvest it? And Dan's going to answer those questions for us. Nice. Definitely going to be a, a fun conversation. And our guest on Thursday is going to be Joshua Havel. We uh, talked about this when we were at Big Iron uh, about him working with the University of Minnesota to bring a new variety of hops to the northern U.S. That would be the upper Midwest, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, more resistant to the type of climate we have. So he'll be joining us on Thursday and on Friday. Randy Nelson is back for Lawn and Garden Radio and I got a few house plants that I need to ask him a few things about, so we're going to talk about that and so much more throughout this coming week, so make sure you join us every day, 1 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This is Weather and Ag in Focus. It's 2 o'clock. The Jay Thomas Show is coming up next. 970 WDAY AM and 93.1 FM, Fargo-Moorhead.